you already had put me on. <laughs> and I am going to go find my earphones, but I'm charging as well. So just kind of, I'll come and go. I'll do what I can. Thank you for being present. Thank you for being there for us. Is Ollie going to be jumping on too? Yeah, he's going to do it on his phone, I think. Man. Yeah. Toodles. Toodles. Did you see the moon and how pretty it looks? You know what? I was driving back from past it's you. It's got and like I... a big ring around it. Like it's like so huge. It looks like, poof. it's Aww. amazing. Here I was a silly mood down at the beach yesterday being like, look at the moon. I'll take a photo with my phone. And this guy's walked past being like, you can't get the moon with your phone. And I was like, Apparently not, but I can't find my glasses <laughs> either, so I'm winning at life. Get over it. <laughs> okay, so tonight I just want to give it two more seconds because I know that Belinda said she wanted to be on. Let me just quickly double check. She's not here, Angel. And then we will have a full house. So how many more are we waiting on? Uh, I believe Belinda said she wanted to get on. Awesome. Um, she looks like she's seen my message. Awesome. Okay. <clears throat> yep. Okay. <sighs> so. Hey, babes. Worst two days ever. On what phone to ATO. What did Belinda come out as? Sorry? What did Belinda come out as? She hasn't done it yet. I've just seen a message come through to her saying that she's having some big turmoils. So oh. it's not been a great day. Oh. I suspect she's a she's either a connector activator or she's a diplo sensor. <laughs> Yeah, right. She was only sitting down in the call, so I couldn't see the rest of her body to tell. Or I could just be a stalker and have a look right now. She did identify more as mezzo, she said. Yeah, she has some beautiful mezzo behaviours. She's got that connector face. She just had a look at her hands. You can tell by people's hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can the tell. Size. That's the cool. size, but then also the finger lengths. Short fingers. So can you, if you can tell about someone's um, hands, can you tell about like a man's, how big a man is? You're like, oh no, we have to go there because it's only small. Oh, oh. Conversations about this. Oh, we've had so many mindgasmic conversations about this. So we actually know that there is a specific health type that if you prefer a certain size, you were going to go that health type. And there's what, another what's that? <laughs> crusaders. So men crusaders okay. are the most well endowed. Um, diplomats is hit and miss. <laughs> it's hit and miss. And same I with Garden. That is at university. We did go through this and we'll, this was like almost 20 years ago now. But they taught us this. I remember it clearly. Mm. <laughs> so we've, we've had several many discussions with quite a few of our coaches and we all came up with a, a theory. Yeah. <laughs> we're conducting a case study at the, like a, we're doing a field study at the moment. <laughs> Excuse me, can you show me your hands? Okay, cool. Yeah. No, and now drop you're them. A, you're a no, thanks. <laughs> so, mesom well, yeah. well, we can't, it's not, we don't know if it's directly correlated to hand size. It's yeah. actually no. Yeah. Um, I do yeah, think that the smaller the calves, generally, the larger the anatomy. Oh, well, crusader, yeah. Yeah. Small calves, okay. <laughs> One of my friends has a theory of um, nail beds. It's her theory on, like, if they're short nail beds, then short, mm -hmm. the yeah. Yeah. Mm. Cool. I'll be, I always look at people's hands too, so it's funny. So it's, you know. For me, I'm always looking to see, as a, as a PH360 coach, I'm always looking to see whether their point, a ring finger is longer than their pointer finger because for us in the PH360 world, and for me and what my brain loves to talk about is, especially for women, if your um, 
ring finger is longer it means that during gestation during like you being a mama mum was going through a lot more stress which means that naturally you were embedded with more testosterone fighting power resilience and potentially will have more attributes of aggression and or lifestyle resilience than others um, mm. because of mum's what mum went through and that can be financial that can be partnership that can be actual real life and death and in any of those spectrums really will cause the cortisol to rise and our finger to be long so we come out mm. to help mum that's just dumbing it oh know. actually in evolutionary biology i learned about this as well is that's the theory behind um gay sons particularly the first son because they have no desire, inherent desire to progress their genes through their own reproductive reproduction, but they will assist in bringing up younger children and help their genes progress in that way. So that's why they're often quite nurturing. It's just one theory behind, behind mm. it. Quite often it's the oldest child who's gay. Mm. There you go. I nerded out on evolution, evolution biology at uni. I was obsessed with it. <laughs> now pH. Okay, so we digress, which we are so good at. My, okay, beautiful. My beautiful humans, tonight we are talking as our final one of the free group um, coaching that we're doing. And if you haven't seen the post, I'm pretty sure I tagged you all in it. So please, please, please go back and read the explanation of what is going on now. But um, this is the last one of this group one. Um, Sage and I are taking probably a week off from each other and then a week off from the, no, no, we're taking a week off to just rebalance and then we're bringing back together the, the final component of the next phase, which is going to excite all of you more than ever because as we are all humans having our own evolutionary experience so is this program and as sage and i learn and develop more aspects of the moving parts of human biology we up level the programs that we're creating and so where we see the universe moving um as a collective we now know how we can best serve so the next program is going to be next level i know sage hates that word um so um tonight we're going to talk about priorities and 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 bringing a, like a, a rounding out but also an entry point if that makes sense so a delightful conversation i'll go through the presentation and we'll try and leave questions for the end but if anything's burning feel free to pop up i'm never going to stop anyone from blurting out their their thoughts and feelings because we understand that some of us get that way. So you are unique. And the discussion of PH360 and epigenetics and all the delightfulness that we have is that your genotype, which is your genes, plus your epigenetics, which is your environment and your lifestyle, creates the phenotype, which is the expression of the human you are right now. Uh, next slide. Today, we're going to talk about priorities. Now, the priorities don't mean that any aspect is more or less important, but in order for everything else to work effectively down the chain of command for each health type, we need to have these other priorities that are ranked higher in greater order so that we can then amplify the effectivity, effectivity, what? The effectiveness, that hurt, of all the rest of them in priority for you. Does that make sense? So none of them are null and mute. And just because it's at the bottom doesn't mean it's not important. But to get the most out of those bottom ones, everything else above it needs to be in homoseity, in calm, in balance, to filter down and make that last one really effective, like it should be. Next. Okay, so um, everyone acts differently and our... Uh, our health types really plays a role in our why, in why we do what we do, why we eat the food, why we don't eat the food, why we exercise, why we don't exercise, why we react to certain situations and why we don't react to certain situations. And it actually is that our, our biology, um, our hormones will um, not only grow our body to certain shapes and sizes, and this is touching on something we spoke about the other night, but it will also shape our mind and the way our emotions and thoughts and feelings react as well. So the hormones dictate so much in our body. So it's really important to know that that then creates our why based on our biology. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
In saying that, you guys have been introduced to the different health types briefly in different ways. So I wanted to quickly touch on that today and just talk through how we have the main three, which most of you may be familiar with, which is the mesomorph, the endomorph, and the ectomorph. Then we have what we call the hybrids. So the main mesomorph is the activator in red. The main endomorph is the guardian. The main um, uh, ectomorph is the sensor. And then in between that, we have the ectomeso, which is the crusader in the blue. We have the mesoendo, which is the connector in the yellow. And then we have the endoecto, which is the orange. These guys have different attributes of the different health types and make their bodies even more specific. And these um, health types that we talk about are more like a, a trend. They're what we call a bio trend, which is why we categorize them into six different groups is because there is a more of a trend into each of those ones, which each of you fall into. So what I wanted to do tonight was give you guys a bit of a discussion on each of the six and their top three priorities that are going to give you your best, I guess, bang for buck to prioritize and get in order. And this will probably do really well for each and every one of you for the next few weeks while Sage and I are reformulating everything. Um, nope, Jodie's gone. Um, she's back. While we're reformulating everything, we we feel like this will give you guys the best bang for buck. Um, Jodie and any of the girls that are starting out now will actually get access to the recordings from what we're just finishing now and also the self-evolution program, which will really give you guys the opportunity to um, delve in. But like I said to Tasha tonight, please make sure if you're a guardian or a diplomat, please remember my favorite saying, you eat the elephant only one mouthful at a time. So that is the rules of engagement for the next couple of weeks. We are eating the elephant one mouthful at a time. Okay. So we're going to start with the sensor. Now, as you can see, the sensor is the skinnier, um, the more uh, quaint body, like they're, they're finer in detail. Um, and these guys, oh, Ollie, I'm just going to mute you, my dear. So if you need to, just unmute. Um, so these guys is really the main bang for buck about a sensor is it's really important for them. And maybe you might know a friend that looks like this or behaves like this, um, or looks like quite slender and quite tiny. Um, these are the sensors. This, these guys, their real main thing is that they need to put themselves first because putting themselves first gives them safety. Their safety must come first because they don't have the capacity to fight off any larger threats. And it's really important for these guys to create a quiet, happy environment, especially at home. And the other thing is with their personality is it's really important to lower their expectations of other people and accept them as they are. Because they are constantly thinking and analysing for their own safety, um, Cut that feedback because they are um, for their own safety. They're constantly analysing the outside world. They can set quite high expectations for how others can show up, which can lead to all kinds of um, uh, blockages for connection and, and requirements of the of the body and the mind. So it's really important that they yeah they really work on your expectations. Um, so that their priorities, their top three are mind, place, and food. The mind is that they're very driven and they're very inward focused. So they're, they're constantly um, analyzing within themselves and, and, and um, uh, critical of themselves, but they can also be critical of others, which is why that first statement is quite relevant. But being very driven, it's very, they're very logical. Everything has to make sense and they want to make sure that their safety is always first so it's safe to stay on the beaten track. It's safe to follow the steps. It's safe to be logical and sequential. It's not safe to not do the thing that makes sense. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Their place is their second. Because of their heightened sense of awareness, they can become overwhelmed. And this can cause stress, which will dominate their mind and put them out of balance. So they need to keep their senses low around the home. Uh, especially because that's their sanctuary. Then would come their food. Their digestion won't work if their mind is very busy. Naturally, if your, your brain is constantly going, that's where the body, the blood, the energy is focused. There's little available for the stomach to do the digesting 
which is very important to keep them um, keep their brain going because the brain and the gut are quite connected. So their food needs to be easily digestible, but they also need to be very present while they're eating. These are the guys that shouldn't read books, shouldn't have TV or loud noises going around them. They should be really focusing on the food, the flavor and the chewing so that their stomach has the best option of digesting effectively so that we can quickly feed the mind and they can go on being uh, really present in their, in their environment. So it's really all about safety, information, understanding, following rules. Um, they may ask what, um, they would generally, we would generally ask them if they are what they think about themselves rather than what they're feeling. So these guys' power word is think, not feel. Endomorph is feel. Jumping across the wheel, we then go into activators. So these guys, it's all about having variety. Everything that they do needs to be about variety and expressing themselves and moving their body. Absolutely always moving their body. There's a chat. Just hold on one second. Oh, yeah. Um, then uh, all about moving their body. So everything about their top three priorities is fitness, food, and social. So um, it's about balancing the brain, getting them into theater brain state, Giving, moving their body means it gives their, their body the cathartic release so that they don't experience anger. The movement really helps them to release this. Food is their second priority. It's critical because they have a very short digestive system and the wrong food can very easily cause inflammation and cause digestive upsets. It will also decrease their mood and their energy and lead to chronic stress. These are the guys that get hangry, right? And it's usually every two hours. <laughs> um, then we go into social. So social is their third. So stress will manifest physically and experience a lot of emotions as anger leading to bluntness and being straight to the point, which can cause a lot of social issues, which I'm sure most of you would understand a friend that would probably be a bit like this. It's really important to help them understand how they need to express themselves safely and how people will then respond to their different ways of expressing themselves. It's important for them to express themselves uh, immediately. These guys are all about challenge and winning. Uh, they really are really about getting on with it and asking. And we, we, we generally want to ask our friends that are activators, you know, what are they going to get out of this? How are they going to feel if they're winning? What do you think you need to do? So it's a doing word, not a feeling word or a thinking word. Then we go across again to the other main health type, which is the guardian. Um, this is the pure mes uh, endo. So these guys are about slow changes and wins, making sure they surround themselves with family and loved ones, and they need to ask for support. So their first priority is social. And it's really about protecting of others and community. In order to do this, they conserve all of their energy, all of the time, just in case there's that one threat to their community, like a famine or a, uh, a global problem. <laughs> then their relationships um, with their coaches, with their direct network, their support network are really important. And addressing um, their relationship with their close support network is really important to help them feel safe so that they are, don't go into energy conserving mode. And when they feel supported, they will take changes with their food and their exercise. They'll do it on their own. As long as they feel supported, they will feel capable of making these changes. Food is second. Um, they will go towards calorie dense foods and comfort food as their way to protect the community because they are stockpiling for later. Fitness is that they have energy, uh, they have an energy conserving body in an environment that doesn't need energy to be conserved because we're no longer under the threat of famine. We're no longer living in caves, right? So increasing their movement, um, because of their predisposition to disease, uh, movement for the conserving of energy is really important. So like lots of walking, um, these guys, nature walks and, and being out and constantly moving is really important for these guys. Then we have the um, crusader. So the crusaders, um, it's more about knowing that their, their mind is the main piece. It's more about facts. It's about being very... Um, to the point, um, it's very much about being um, logical and sequential. So their, their first priority is the mind. Um, and it's about um, just moving my window here. Sorry, guys, things keep popping up. It's about um, 
oh yeah, breath work helping them to get into their alpha state. They need to rest to be more productive, which does seem counterintuitive to them because they're like a workhorse and they like to keep going. Knowing will always cast the next thing. So um, they never feel like they're, they're out of their depth. So these guys are great. They need to know all the moving parts and all the facts in order to make sense of it, make logical sense of it. And then they will become the best at that. They won't respond well to people telling them. So getting them to find out for themselves and finding all of the facts and figures themselves is the best way. And reminding them that food, a good diet, a steady diet will assist the mind's capabilities. The second priority is talents. So focusing on mind, um, focusing their mind onto something for them to feel they are achieving, uh, being heard and being valued at work. These guys are talented, but they need to know that they are valued. Then place is their third priority and it's time to rest and having, um, having a happy work environment is really important. Getting into nature so that they get fresh air to keep their stress levels down. It's really important that these guys get really good fresh air. Um, they want to be the best without considering much else and they won't understand why um, unless it's related to productivity and the choices that they make will always be logical. Then we have the connector. So the connectors, these guys are about fun, play and movement. These guys are run by oxytocin, which is a, a connective um, hormone. So it's all about connecting um, and having um, a true connection, like no, they, these guys can sense when something's off. So it's really about having good people around them and um, like-minded people, it's super important. Their mind is their main priority. They want freedom in their mind. Um, is there any part they don't feel free or is there any way they feel trapped within their own mind? Feeling trapped will actually affect their body and this will make them feel like the environment isn't safe. They will then go into conserving energy. Um, they are driven for everything to be fun. Um, they don't like having a bad day nor conflict, but they do need to make sure that they speak their feelings to someone they trust so that they, because they actually do verbally process. Connectors are the ones that talk through the stuff. Connectors are the ones that will always speak to their friends and not they look like they're not sorting it out themselves, but that's how they are actually figuring it out for themselves. Then social. So they need to feel connected to people, but not trapped by people. If socially stressed, um, they feel unsafe and they, they need freedom to experience and express themselves. They're the ultimate party friend and they're the ultimate dance and play friend place well their color needs to be uh, their place needs to be colorful sorry yellows and colors that remind them of the sun if they're not in an environment that's sunny like it's a rainy day or it's a wet season or they're in europe you know having lots of colors around the house is really important to help them feel vibrant the sun is where they get their energy and their happiness from so whatever you can do to bring that element into the home will help them feel so much happier and safer and more cheerful and welcoming at home um it's, it's a sanctuary for the mind to create a positive space. It's very important that they have their environment creating that happy, positive environment uh, space for them. Then we get to the diplomat, which is most of the people on the call. <laughs> um, it's really important that these guys, yes, it's really important that these guys get out into nature and remove their stresses. They need to think a little bit deeper or more meaningful so that they can make good choices rather than overthinking. To do that, it's our environment, our place that's super important. Lots of open space, my, uh, rearranging the home to be open space. It's been my week this week, my birthday this weekend. We're going to Mount Tambourine to be out in open spaces, guys. So it's super important for happiness and balance. Then we go into talent. Talent, to do something that they are good at and that's on their schedule rather than anything else. Like when things on your schedule, you feel so much more safe and balanced. Talent needs to be recognized. What you're good at should be expressed in a way that you are recognized, um, not in an egotistical way, but in a way that is showing you that you're doing the right thing and you have a purpose and, and a place. Um, uh, yeah, and, and it needs to be recognized for why they're doing their work. Fitness is third, guys, third for diplomats. Lots of volume is needed. The body will go into conservation mode if their place and their talents are causing them stress. If they um, aren't in the right 
um, energy or aren't in the right environment, their body will conserve and overthink and be stuck in rumination and they won't be motivated. They won't be motivated to do the fitness. They won't be motivated to choose the right foods because their environment and their genius are not in flow. So clear guidelines without urgency or stress. Um, they are great with lists and will follow directions when it makes sense. And they will take directions well when they choose them. <laughs> so we're really excited by, that's the end of it actually, that went much quicker than I expected. Um, <laughs> we're really excited because where we're moving from here is into our vision. Our vision is to, like it says, to provide the, the um, provide intuitive personalized health and business solutions to the next generation of innovators. What is on the rise right now? Innovative souls finding new ways of being, new ways of creating and new ways of expressing themselves. Now is the time where the entrepreneur, the small business is on the rise. And we're so excited because this is the time for people to come back into themselves, back into understanding what is healthy and balanced and true for them. And then coming into a space of contribution and enabling us to really, really harness our own self-expression, our own awareness, awareness of each other and what true community is all about. So that being said, mm -mm -mm, is there any questions about those priorities? Does anyone have any questions about in the other health types or about your own health type? Oh, hang on, you've, you've muted again. So with um, the fitness one for the diplomats mm -hmm. and the heavy, the heavy um, for the, um, what was it? Like the volume, how would you do volume now when we're at home? Oh my gosh, we get to get creative. Um, so we are very strong and volume can be done quite well. Um, things like packing a backpack and going for a walk um, and having that weight. Endomorph, so guardians and diplomats, do really, really well with weight on them. Their body feels safest when it's underweight, like as when it's being pushed with weights. So it's really, really great. Um, the body responds well in releasing excess weight when it has that there. So backpacks, um, body weight exercises, you can get creative with dumbbells and resistance bands and things like that, but definitely making sure you're looking at your chrono wheel, your chronobiology that says when um, fitness is best timed for you, which for diplomats is three to, uh, six. three to six for most of them, some one to three, but three to six generally. Um, so utilize the right time. Um, and you'll also see in the app, there's actually some different exercises that you can utilize as well with, um, with machines, without machines, um, using some stuff at home. You can get creative with pots. I know, um, Laura, one of the girls ran a cast iron pot the other day and she was doing a whole body workout using a cast iron pot. Static colds are really good as well for the endos. So wall seats and holding like half, doing half reps. So you're getting more time under tension mm. and holding with the static. Just It's really good for your connective tissue as well and really great to uh, get the fluid moving a lot more. Yeah, I've actually seen that in the um, exercises today. Yeah. yeah. The four and one's really, really good. So taking four seconds through the main part, part of the movement. And also with the food, how it says fast, you can fast between meals, five to six meals a day. How many meals do you recommend a day? Only three, generally for the diplomat. We say only the main meals um, and no snacking if you can. Um, I mean, if you're doing a, a large amount of brain work and you really, really feel like you need a snack, just something small and easy to digest is best. Um, but um, for diplomats in particular, we generally say breakfast, later with it being easily digestible. So that could be smoothies, that could be leftovers of a goulash or a stew from last night or something that's cooked is good for diplomats in the morning. If you feel hungry and the later, the better. Um, then we say, um, for the women, we say lunchtime is when you're eating like a queen or a king. And then dinner time is when you're a poor yeah. vegan. Yeah. Is usually the easiest way to understand it for a diplomat. 
cool. And the, the, the timing of lunch is crucial. Because if you're eating at two or three or four o'clock in the afternoon and you're having your biggest meal, guaranteed you will not be very hungry at night time. Mm. Cool. That's all for me. Thanks. No worries. Great question. Thank you. Anybody else? Jana? Yes. Katie. So Ollie and I both being diplomats and so obviously lots of food types are going to be similar, which is great. What about with the children? Mm, how old are they again? Uh, nearly 12 and 8. Generally keeping the kids with their, their, their five meals per day because they are in the growing phase at that point. So... Um, if they don't, if they're not hungry, if they're like, I know a lot of diplomat children quite often won't really want breakfast and their parents are like, no, you must eat breakfast. <laughs> and well, I, think, like, I think that it's safe to say that both Ollie and I have been brought up in very traditional ways. And we've probably up until now eaten very traditionally. You go through phases of where you might please yourself mm -hmm. and listen to your body, but you know, eating when I work, but all of my eating habits now do not coincide with when lunch is meant to be according to society. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also, I can see there's got to be lots of shifts in our food choices because, you know, we like cheeses and obviously alcohol and a whole, and there's a whole lot of learning curve around the food. But I can also see that, you know, the children come into it and it's just getting that right balance. When it comes to children and the feeding the family, your main meal times will still be eaten. And there is a snack time for diplomats at 12, which if you've got children, generally the children are going to be hungry around 12 o'clock. It's a given. Um, so it's, it's really just flowing with what the kids need. And, and obviously we've spoken about this before is having the right foods in the house. Like the kids are going to be okay. If they, if they eat chippies and things like that, they generally can eat some chippies. It's not going to kill children. They burn it off. Um, uh, everything within reason, everything balanced um, for children is generally the best way to do it. Um, and depending on your, your parenting style, my love, like if you, want to be giving i mean probably sage might be the best at talking about this because she's got a child but um from what i've done with families that i've worked with it's like you know if you've got a child who's quite tall and lanky and they don't want breakfast see how they go if they're vague and they're not keeping it up and they're getting really aggressive in the morning because they're not eating breakfast well then they maybe need breakfast um nice. if they don't want a big dinner and they're pretty okay that way well then don't worry about giving them a big dinner children are pretty intuitive generally um as to what they do and don't want and you'll if they're i mean my mother used to know when i was hungry because i'd be angry i was hungry constantly um so but i can communicate that as a child i was, I was able to figure that out say so, do you have anything to say on that one Dan? Um, yeah, I mean, I probably do my dinner in the background. I'm cooking for both of us, but my son's, I made a Hansa pie the other day and I didn't, I didn't know if he would eat it, but I gave it to him and he did. So I'm still surprised that he'll eat some of the things I don't expect him to eat. And I just keep, he's 11. Um, and I keep just giving them to him till he eats them. But if he there's some things that I don't want to eat, I'll give them to him and I'll just make something different. Or I, I just design the food so I can add bits into him that I don't want. Um, so we're both having chicken tonight, but I've baked some veggies for him and I'm having more of the Hunza pie, spinach and kale and stuff. Um, and so I, I've managed, I kind of make it so it's not two dinners, but there's variations of one dinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, I've got um, a couple other clients that have got two children and they're twins. And so they would get the kids involved as much as possible. 
get them choosing the menu, get them choosing the options and discuss it with them, you know, bring it as an open discussion and let them have that power of choice. You know, we're going to have chicken tonight. Do you want it with salad or vegetables? I don't want either of those. All right. Well, what, what do you suggest? Yeah. I just give him a little bit of the veggies and then I'll cook some pasta or something for him. Yeah. So I'm getting him used to having it, but then if to, cause he eats heaps at night time. He's, but I mean, the, the thing is, he's still his most likely an activator like me. So it helps when your kids are the same health fat. And you can see little idiosyncrasies. There is ways once they get a bit older to know definitely what they are or more dominantly what they are. Um, but when they're quite young, um, we could probably sit down and have a discussion about that and, and have the kids in like in the video or photos of the kids and discuss their personality types and whether they're, high energy in the morning or whether they're lower and slower in the morning and hard to get up out of bed. Um, do you find they pick and graze or do they really want a big lunch or do they not want anything until, um, you know, there's, there's certain idiosyncrasies that we can really look at with, with their being and see a bit of a trend as to what they're more than likely going to be. Yeah. But it's, it's yeah, like, no, they, they, all the meals that we've cooked, any, anything we've cooked using the recipes from the app, delicious love them you know wow well, uh, can you write that in a test for you right now like, holy moly i've been making a big effort with food lately and i've cooked heaps from the app and it's i agree mm. Mm. i think a friend a client friend who signed up with it with her husband and her children and yeah, the husband and children so love the food from the app better than any of the food they've ever had like and the kids were like same experience because like there was a recipe there with um prawns and my daughter would definitely not eat prawn um and but we sort of approached it slightly differently but it had all sorts of sumac and all sorts of different spices on it and Hachi loved it and me and it was like this is tasty and do you know what I mean like and that's a bit unusual. I didn't expect them necessarily to go for it. But they did. And, and anything we've cooked from the app has gone down delicious, yum. Yay. Does that feel good? Does that feel like empowering and easy for you guys then? Yeah, but it's still, I don't know, Shana, it's just still a, you know, Ollie's been doing a, a stellar job mm -hmm. prepping. Where and do you feel the issue cooking. is? Just to, you know, like, I don't know what he was got on his app, but he saw that his breakfast took 90 minutes to prepare or something. I said, well, that's a joke. Um, I said, there's a fault in your system. <laughs> I said, email Shana. Yeah, but the thing is, there's so many recipes on there. There's like thousands of them. But I'm like you. I I don't want to spend hours cooking. I want it to be quick. Um, yeah, me too. And so I just go through and find the ones that I like ones that are easy that don't have complicated and I can always find something and then I find I have to print the recipe or I don't do it. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we're, well we're, I, I take screenshots on mine, send it to Ollie, say then what's got to be purchased and then, you know, he's got to follow the step by step. So that's where, you know, it's all good, but it's just getting into that habit. It's just, and it's just new things to cook. Like I'm kind of just going slowly because um, I was eating from my top um, list a lot, but I wasn't really putting in as much effort as I should. It's my second priority. And so I've just started with easy recipes. And then once they're kind of then in my catalog of recipes, I'll kind of add some more in. So this week or well, tomorrow, I'm going to make some salmon and cauliflower or trout. I think I've got and cauliflower and egg, like they're kind of like muffin type things for snacks. And I made them last week and I won't have to use a recipe to do it because I get the gist of it now. So then that's just in my catalogue of recipes. So I'm just kind of slowly adding to the catalogue of easy. Where, have, where do you add to the catalogue of your recipes? Just in my, just my. Oh, break. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. Just so the really ones. just starting out with some of the basic ones to get the basic concepts yeah. of how to do things. And anything that has chicken, you can add beef, you could add pork, you could add turkey. Um, you can generally interchange. Hey, little one. You can generally interchange um, the protein sources and you can also swap out the protein oh sources daughter. for legumes. It is. I can't see everyone. Oh, slide across. I'm so, just yeah. going to have to put her to bed. Did so, you have any questions, Ollie? I will. So, no, no, that was interesting. She's got to sort out the menus, I think. 
Yeah, and just, just keep it simple. If it's a if it's a recipe, and the thing is, is they do allow other people to upload their recipes that they fall in love with. Um, so there are some stuff oh, that no, probably you needs need to do that. Yeah, there is some some stuff that potentially needs a little bit more monitoring. But if it's a ninety minute preparation, I ponder whether it could just be thrown together a little bit less um, mm. diligently. Um, recipes i find is just a guideline and once you get the gist of it you should just be able to concoct something of similar standard if that makes sense yeah ollie's yeah. the master on the um nutribullet for breakfast yeah you guys have been making some awesome smoothies i'd love to see you guys contributing some photos to the group because those are some expiring stuff and the his and hers you guys have got this his and hers happening <laughs> that i think is phenomenal i love seeing that well, what if I send you a picture, Shannon, you can share it. It's easier for you to share it than oh, me or Ollie. Katie, mine. Where's the community? <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like you still have some more things you want to air out with that, Katie. And because, like we discussed just before, guys, we said about connectors, I know that Katie has some big connector traits in her. So in a safe space, I'd love to hear if there's anything else about the food that you want to air out. Yeah. Is okay, I'm gonna to... I'm gonna sign off. I'm afraid just to get her to bed. So keep up the good work, Ollie. Thank you. Speak to you soon. Oh, before you go, yeah, you guys are still meant to have your ten minute date going through your mind section together. Oh yes, I know. We must. We must do that. You must, or else you'll be late for a very important date. <laughs> I I read my I read it in bed. Ollie was half asleep, and but I did read it. You go, darling. I'll tuck her up in a minute. Okay. Um, and um, fascinated, fascinated by the mind. Even though it's low on our, our list, it's still important. Absolutely fascinated. Mm, anything in particular that came? Mind was our conversation this morning. So, was there anything in particular that came up in the mind for you? Um. Well, you know how they sort of the three sections when you go through it. They're sort of I don't know forgot what the three sections are but the one at the bottom which was like when you're really in flow mm -hmm. and that was just like bang on i so like know that yeah was there anything that you feel you needed to tweak or understand like is there anything that you could enhance considering oh, they're on point always plenty to enhance <laughs> What were the things that were spot on? What did it say? I will tell you. Do you want to share screen? I will bring it up. So, uh, like, it, it, it's sort of, um, so I may tend to be rebellious, persistent, direct and self-affirming. I may not be open to considering other people's opinions, but instead prefer my own ideologies when my levels of dopamine, which promotes determination and noradrenaline, is that, I don't know that word, yep. which promotes high activity are surging. And that, that's so true. Um, it says, think of strategic ways to use your ability to be persistent and direct to your advantage. That's what I've got to learn a little bit more, play it to my advantage, not shy away from it, which I tend to do because I think oh, I'm too direct because I've been told a hundred million times I'm too this and I'm too that. Um, but yeah, utilize it to my advantage and this is a great quality to have when you need to be a leader and pave the way for others. So yes, I get that. Um, I, uh, yeah, choose your battles. Yes. I can, I can be quick to start a debate or an argument. Yes. I've noticed that a little. No. But choose your battles carefully so that <laughs> others know when you debate it's due to a firm reason. I've tried to be getting better at that. So that does resonate. And Can you think of some current things at the moment where that really, where you could, what day are we on now? Thursday. Is there anything you could, you feel like towards the end of the week that could really enhance for you? What me do something differently around that. Hmm. Is, there, is there any, that point there just stood out for me, for you. You said there's heaps of that, that happens heaps for you. 
is there anything before the end of the week that you could close out really like honing in on that and any situations? Yeah, like I think um, I fall, have been falling into the trap of at the end of the day, probably when we're all a little bit weary, somehow something will bug me and I will start an argument with Ollie because I just become fixated on what I believe to be right or whatever it might be. And, and then that becomes, and of course, it's just not necessary. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just not going there. It's just not necessary on a daily basis. And I, I would be doing it on a daily basis, to be perfectly honest. Mm. And how do you think you would... I want to wear that right. Oh, well, first of all, what awesome awareness. Yeah, that's like, I actually almost want to cry for you right now. Um, oh, thanks that's beautiful with the discussions we've had that awareness is very profound well thanks and knowing that how do you think you would prefer to be oh yeah look it doesn't serve anyone it, it it's it, it might have felt better for me to get it off my chest perhaps but not really because it le left someone else feeling worse off. So it doesn't really benefit anyone. So it's just, again, knowing that I have a ten my mind has a tendency because it likes to process stuff and I have that tendency, but I don't need to go there. And it, a, I, it, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. What a, what a great opportunity going through this together to open up that conversation and bring awareness to it. And then if you do slip up, it can be, oh, I'm doing that thing again. And it can, that just disarms the situation completely a lot of the time. Mm. Such a valuable thing to go through. Mm. For sure. Mm. We had that discussion about being not being in a cactus. <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah. I think we're peeling back another layer of that, that beautiful conversation we had in in um, seeing where the cactus may be present and the times in which we can come back into the fun, beautiful Katie that allows Ollie to be the amazing masculine Ollie that makes you feel good more of the time. Mm. Well, I think also I spend a lot of my energy being in my masculine energy. I, I work a lot. I spend a lot of time on the computer, work in a very male environment. So I really, that whole getting back into nature, you know, Mother's Day's on Sunday and I, like, haven't been on a bushwalk, couldn't tell you how long. I'm like, I want to go on a bushwalk and have a picnic. I don't care where it is on the planet, but that's what I'm doing on Sunday with my family. Perfect. And, I'm, you know, I just got to go and recharge. Perfect. Mm. It's going to be wonderful when you get to read Ollie's statements as well. Mm. Yeah. And with this new lens and this new emotion and this new understanding of how can I be less of the cactus and how can he be like, how can we connect more and how can he stand up more and be more in his masculine? I feel like this section will create some really beautiful awareness between the two of you. Mm -hmm. And a major thing to come from the awareness and understanding is this is a biological function of your brain. So it's not your fault. It's not bad. It's a biological function that with awareness you can become responsible for, you can open up the conversation that you're not at fault. No one's at fault. And yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's just how your brain operates. And we all have them. We all have our downfalls in that context. <laughs> but we're yeah. to be able to come that's aware of them with it right there in front of us. Yeah, that's right. And that's why it's been um, really great that Ollie and Shana have had a chat and that Ollie's got engaged in the program and the conversations because again this is not light-hearted it makes sense but it takes a little bit of consideration a little bit of time a bit of reading a bit of processing discussing and if you don't give it that attention life gets a little bit sharpy and jaded and 
mm. everyone gets a bit narky and you know if divorce rates are as high as they are i think you know we're on you know, it's, it's no wonder because no one really takes the time to understand each other. And this is like a whole new opening and awareness to me I've never come across before. Oh, that's beautiful. It's amazing. Mm. I'm excited for you guys. Yeah, no, I'm really grateful for your help and your programs and all of your insights and making it accessible. I love it. It's all in you, babe. It's all in you. Mm, good. Um, so the only homework play conversation that I think you guys need is just find the sparks, find the new bits of conversation and the cool new awarenesses in both of your profiles. Well, yeah, I think I think a big part, sorry, Sage, is it's, it's real just acceptance of who we both are as individuals. I think that's our first base. And, you know, that might take us a few more weeks to get there, but... You're both it, diplomats. <laughs> Does that mean it's going to take us a while? <laughs> but what I was going to say, given that you're both diplomats, is to create space in your schedule for it. Mm. So to say, all right, it's going to be Sunday afternoon. Like, give yourself time. Sure. Obviously, and create that space in the schedule so you've actually set the time there to do it. Mm have yeah. a glass of wine like it's a nice thing to do it's you put some music on have a nice glass of wine and actually enjoy the interaction because it can be these these things about once you're exposing your vulnerabilities and you're owning them it actually brings you closer always sure. now you have a platform to give you conversation with awareness without judgment mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah indeed oh yeah Definitely. Jodie, is there anything, or sorry, Katie, is there anything more that you would like to discuss? Is there anything more that's sitting there? No, that's all good. Thank you. I want to give you a, I wish I could give hugs right now. <laughs> so hugs, 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 big hugs. Mm. <laughs> I miss them so much. <sighs> Birthday rebellion. I'm going to be hugging. Um, <laughs> Jodie, is there anything in your awareness that you feel like discussing? She's muted. No, she's shaking her head. You and Tasha have got a um a date with a date with diplomat files. Mm. Yeah, it'd be good. Because we're thinking of doing a program together, so it's it's inter it's interesting. Awesome. Mm. Understanding. Someone else was today. Oh, that was Angela. She was like, how do you go working with your same health type? Um, which will be interesting in the next phase. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Katie's like, oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I feel like I've got all the conversation out of me. Sage, do you have anything else? No. Not... Thank you so much for sharing with us, Katie. It's really mm. nice to hear. Mm. Oh, thank you. You know, it's it's always interesting. I always learn something and I love it. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bless. I just really appreciate you showing up. I know you have a lot going on and I know that you guys have had a lot of turmoil and a lot of stuff. So I just want to say complete appreciation for you guys showing up and so much appreciation for Ollie rising up beside you and delving into this with you. Yeah, yeah. It's good. I love your background, Jody. Mine? Yeah. yeah. My mandala. I have a look at that. I love it. It's amazing. Yeah. Is it a fabric or is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, my it's portal. Mm. Ah, it's really lovely. It's beautiful. Thanks. Thank you, ladies, for showing up. Um, Jody, I will be giving you and Tash a message tomorrow with some cool stuff and some structures and stuff. Yeah. So what's what, what's from here now, Shana? Just like what, what? Like we're not doing calls for a bit until. Yeah. So, we'll just keep in touch with you. 
Yeah, yeah. So you've got some one-on-ones left. Um, we are shutting down the group coaching for now. Um, you've got time to go back through the self-evolution unit that you've got. Jody and Tash will get introduced to that and they can pluck the bits that t- look tasty to them in the meantime. Um, and uh, we, we've also got the calls that were in this group as well. So those topics we've laid out very clearly for you guys so you can have a look at the the topics and see if it's something you want to delve further into if you weren't on them live um and as always from the facebook group we firmly firmly encourage you guys to share food posts awareness posts and the more you post in the group actually we still have a little bit of time before we're going to judge the winners of who's actually getting a free year so if you already have a year, you can get another free year. And that was by contribution into the group of awarenesses, of food, of motivation, of partnership awarenesses, of conversations. All of these things can still be added to the group because that's what we want through you sharing your awarenesses and your transformation that inspires others. And we're part of PH360 and the fact that their main mission is that by 2050, we want to eradicate the world of pain, disease, and so much more and really bring about collaboration and contribution. Um, that's our mission too. So, Yeah, well, I, I've, I've promoted you on my um, thing, me jigs, and I don't know, I keep saying to a few of my friends, have you called Shana yet? Just talk to her, <laughs> just talk to her, just, just ping her. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is, um, Sage and I were talking about this today. And if you guys would like to do a call with Sage, that is an option. If you guys feel drawn to certain aspects of Sage, this is why we're working together because we agree with the, the, the being that each of us are and what we bring to the plate. So if you're drawn to working with Sage in a session, let me know. That is an option. There's always an option. Oh, yeah, I'd love to have more conversations for sure. Yeah. So I can just swap one of your sessions with me over to her. Yeah, sure. Good idea. Mm. We'll keep you informed on the next project. Yeah, Yeah, exciting. We'll have a lovely week off you too. Lovely to chat with you, Jodie. And I'm going to sign off and love you. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Cool.